Hi friends. About seven years ago, right about now, I was in the passenger seat somewhere in Wyoming, climbing up a switchback mountain in a tiny two-door Honda that was straining at the task. On this, the first of my cross-country moves that I neither wanted nor chose, I'd been in charge of burning CDs to listen to over the three days of driving. I must have burned at least 10 albums to rotate through, but I can only remember that we had The Greatest Hits of the Supremes and Fleet Fox's Helplessness Blues, the latter of which I chose because the cover was all red and gold and mountainous, like the landscapes we'd be crossing on our drive. I'd popped it in for the day we'd cross the Continental Divide, where the Rocky Mountains cleaved my old home apart from the new. I was not driving because this new western topography made me dizzy. The roads were too steep and the sky too wide. The scale so large and open it made me feel like I was falling off the face of the earth. Even on the passenger side, I was gripping at the cup holder as we climbed and climbed. What the hell had I done? What was I gonna do now? I held my breath and listened. As the titular track moved from the second verse into the third, I started to cry. If I know only one thing, it's that everything that I see of the world outside is so inconceivable. Often I barely can speak. Yeah, I'm tongue tied and dizzy. And I can't keep it to myself What good is it to sing Helplessness blues Why should I wait for anyone else? I was too young and uncertain of myself to have any sense of what my future held at that moment. But what I felt as the music rose up and got surer was that I would stop waiting to find it. I'd hoist myself up bootstraps first if I had to. Stop letting myself get carried around like an accessory and carve out a great and storied life for myself by myself. I believed that it was time for me to forge a life of individual achievement and I was crying because I wanted nothing more. Someday I'll be like the man on the screen I heard as we creaked over the top of the mountain and I felt like I might throw up. I couldn't listen to that song again for years. The whole record is really Sylvia Plath's fig tree of an album. Watching all the possibilities of your life spread out before you and wondering which to reach for as each one starts to wither and fall. Or, I guess as someone on Reddit called it, the best what the fuck am I gonna do with my life album ever. Me, I don't think I ever picked a fig. I've just been starting my life over and over and over again ever since, always feeling a little like I'm too new at this to figure it out. But I listened again from maybe the most stable place in my life these past five years, this apartment, and it was like hearing an entirely different song. There's this first verse that sets the whole thing up. I was raised to believe in. I was somehow unique. Like a snowflake, distinct among snowflakes, unique in each way you can see. But now, after some thinking, I'd say I'd rather be a functioning cog in some great machinery, serving something beyond me. But I so focused in my early 20s on how will I know what to do? How do I stand alone on a mountain? But that queasy feeling in the pit of my stomach was because I was cutting all my ties and leaving all of my support systems behind, convinced that adulthood was figuring out how not to need them. While the whole time this song was searching for a way to be the kind of person who needs people and to be the kind of person that other people need. It imagines a life of finding ways to contribute to the world apart from the bullshit jobs and the vanity numbers, all of the self-aggrandizement. It's yearning for a dense web of interdependency, of feeding each other and serving each other and building consensus about where we go from here. It was such a radical departure from the life that those of us coming of age in the 2008 financial crisis era had been taught to desire, 
that I couldn't help but try to fit it into that same shape of striving alone and climbing alone and kicking everyone else down behind me. But from that deep and dizzy feeling, it invited me to imagine something new. Listening to it now, with the freestanding peak of my younger dreams in the rear view, I feel so grateful to be back down nearer to the earth where I can put down roots and find my people and bind my liberation up with theirs. It's okay that I still don't know what I'll be because I now understand the future as a collective creation. I have your help in making mine and you have my help in yours. And that's how we make it to the other side. In comments, is there a song or a movie or a book or a show that changed meaning for you when you came to it at different times in your life? I want to hear about them, and so does the Radish Collective, the lovely people who made this video possible. You can join them at patreon.com slash itsradishtime, and I will see you soon. Bye.